वेलकम टू सुब्रमणी आई फील लाइक शेखर गुप्ता ऑफ द प्रिंट टुडे बिकॉज आई एम गोइंग टू कॉल दिस कट द क्लाटर कट द क्लाटर इन द सेंस दैट इफ यू वेंट बैक टू द नाइनटीन फिफ्टीज और सिक्सटीज देर इज मिलर एंड मोडिग ले आनी मस्ट बी नाइनटीन फिफ्टी एट फिफ्टी नाइन वेन दे केम आउट विद दिस पेपर सेंग दे इनडिफरेंट टू डिविडेंट्स which is right because if a company earned uh, 100 rupees let's say after paying all the uh, uh, taxes and etc and they they could do two things one is they could give you the money or they could keep it themselves what they gave it to you as a shareholder was dividends what they kept was retained earnings assuming for a minute that you were as capable of earning uh, a return out of that money let's say you could earn 12% out of it and the company was also earning 12% out of it you would be indifferent to the dividend so let's say the share price was quoting at 500 rupees uh, and uh, the company paid out 10 rupees dividend the price should fall by 10 rupees so it do, it should become 490 what you had to do rationally was use that 10 rupees and buy more of the same share if you don't know what else to do <coughs> or invest it somewhere else where you could get that same 12% return which that company was giving for you this is in theory perfectly right but remember this is a time when behavioral finance did not uh, play a very significant role so everybody agreed with him and i think they also got the uh, nobel prize and uh, people said wow this is so brilliant the company share price is irrelevant to the dividend whether the company pays dividend or does not pay dividend the share price should not get affected <laughs> which is right because if you if i let's say i got 100 rupees out of the same company as dividend and i used to it to buy 1/5 of the share because the share price was quoting at 500 rupees so i went and bought 1/5 of the share assuming for a minute that a uh, fraction of a share purchase was possible in uh, those days uh unfortunately or fortunately market did not look at it this way the market always liked companies which paid more dividend now the, you could uh, look at berkshire hathaway and say berkshire hathaway pays no dividend but berkshire hathaway knows what to do with its money or it is sitting with a lot of cash not knowing what to do so last few years when it did not know what to do it went and did a buyback so company could give you dividends or company could do a buyback so right now you have tata consultancy tcs guy trying to do a buyback which is uh, from a tech, uh, tax point of view a little better than company paying you dividend and uh, this is definitely a tata sons uh, initiative saying look we need uh, <clears throat> more buyback so that you buy back these shares we will pay lesser tax and we will use the money elsewhere they i'm sure they must be wanting to fund something else uh, tata coffee or uh, uh, something else. i mean is anything else right tata tata power tata alexi some uh, ev anything like that so so they needed the money so this could be a little driven by the big shareholder but other conditions remaining same uh, i would definitely prefer uh, a buyback to a dividend <coughs> for example in tcs i i know i'm eligible for a buyback but i will not participate in the buyback i have a few shares and i'll keep it right uh, so so that is what happens in case of a share buyback or a case of a dividend but rationally what happens is somebody who is a, a retired person who needs income he prefers living on the dividend now this is very funny he prefers living on the dividend instead of selling the share because selling the share you feel like oh some uh, you know ghar ka maal chala gaya you know, i'm losing some uh, money so i will not sell but the same person will not buy the same share today <coughs> I, uh, you cannot put a gun on my head and make me buy Nestle, but I'm happy to live off the dividend of Nestle. So if Nestle decides that it will not uh, give dividend, but I have to sell the share, I will keep wondering whether to sell Nestle or sell something else. But I will not say, oh, this month I need some money. Let me sell one share of Nestle. Let me sell half a share of Nestle. Let me sell five shares of Nestle. That's not happening. So, a lot of people feel it's a part of mental accounting. You cannot really. I mean, I am so-called a rational investor. I cannot get myself to selling my shares for my day-to-day -day requirements, which I should comfortably be. <laughs> In fact, I keep telling some of my friends that look, you got twenty-five uh, thousand shares of say. uh let's say you got 25000 shares of uh, tata power 
and his monthly expenses are uh, 25000 rupees okay so which means uh, every month assuming uh, tata power remains uh, indexed to inflation every month if he sells off 100 shares of tata power to meet his household expenses life is cool right so uh, should he be doing that answer is yes but will he do that no he will but he is happy till living on the dividends of tata power so if tata power decides not to pay dividend he'll feel very upset but he's got enough for the next 250 months that is 20 years if he sells 100 shares <coughs> he can live comfortably but people don't look at it this way people don't look at uh, shares uh, and dividends as fungible things they look at shares as oh this is my property from this i should get some dividend this is exactly how people will look at say real estate so when i buy a property let's say that property is worth 2 crores on which i am getting uh, annually uh, a rental of something like 2 lakhs I will look at 2 lakhs as my cash flow, as my income and if suppose I am short, I can't sell a portion of my house. So therefore, people put money in REITs. In REITs, you do not know what is your capital, what is coming back. So whatever is coming back is tax free because it is already taxed there, 90% of, uh, is, is, of it is coming back to you. You are using it for your expenses. You do not really worry too much as to what is lying in that black box called REIT. Similarly, in your equity portfolio, you should be <coughs> indifferent to whether you are getting dividend or whether you are selling the appreciation or you are anyway selling an asset which is meant to fund your old age, right? <coughs> well, it does not work that way. <coughs> Let us look at how a company looks at a dividend. We have seen how a shareholder looks at a dividend. How does a company look at a dividend? Company says, well, we need more money. So, we need to, we will need to keep the dividends. Now, this is exactly how a employee uh, would look at it. And, uh, but as the owner, it is important that you remove excess money because then the employee gets very complacent about the money. He thinks, oh, money is cheap. Shareholder is rich. He does not need the money. So, let us do whatever we want. So, it becomes very inefficiently used. So, you take companies like Larson and Tubro and ITC. They just go and diversify. They do whatever they want. People should look at ITC. Do not look at ITC and say they are into FMCG. They went into hotels and look at some of their hotels. It is so, uh, so expensively built that it will never justify the cost. Look at Larson and Dubro. Don't look at Larson and Dubro today. Look at Larson and Dubro historically. They went into glass bottle manufacturing. They went to leather shoes export. They went into, I mean, I can't even imagine cement. They went into shipping, <coughs> right? So, when you leave too much money with the company, the company does completely irrelevant and wrong things, complete misallocation of money. So, the PSUs have been the worst, but then the Tata group has not been too bad, uh, too good. The uh, Larson and Tubro has not been too good. The uh, ITC has not been too good. Very uh, few companies like say HDFC group, they have been very tight about how they use their money, right? They did not get into cement, they did not get into building, they did not get into real estate, right? They did not, they just stuck to financial services. You can't say this for very many groups. So, <coughs> but some companies run out of ideas, they don't know what to do, then those companies pay out more dividend or then they um, start doing a buyback, right? So, Berkshire Hathaway ran out of ideas, they did a buyback. Uh, Microsoft did not pay dividend for very long periods of time because they needed the money to plow it back and now that they do not know what else to do, they are giving a lot of buybacks and dividends, right? Same thing for Apple. So, during a growth phase, the company keeps the money and during a time when they do not know what to do, they start parting with the money in form of dividends or in the form of uh, uh, buyback, right? So, these are the two things that they can do, but you should largely be indifferent to buybacks or uh, uh, or uh, dividend. But when you are younger and you do not need the dividend, you are actually better off with a buyback. Even if you do not participate, it is going to increase value for you. So, a portion of your portfolio should be such that it goes for a that the management does a buyback and you do not participate and the portion of your uh, money should come to you as a dividend if you need the income. If you do not need the income, then you do not need it. But then every company cannot go into buyback or every company cannot say we are in a growth phase. So, when you are younger and your investments are in growth phase companies, you do not mind because you do not want the dividend. When you are older, you want some of the dividends to come. But if you are in the growth phase, 
in your uh, in your in, in your portfolio includes a company which is in a growth phase and you are old you still can sell the shares and raise money right there's nothing which stops you from selling the share you have got 10000 shares you sell 500 shares you sell 200 shares you sell 100 shares depending on how much of money you need also sometimes when you realize that companies are desperate to pay dividends to uh, impress you that they have earnings it's a time when you look at it and uh, wonder whether these are uh, signaling uh, to you that they are doing very well or are they really doing well right so uh, don't look at dividend and say oh this company is paying me 8% dividend so it's a great share to buy that's a ridiculously wrong reason to buy i look at a dividend and say okay when a company is paying 8% dividend or let's say at 150 rupees when i buy this share uh, i am getting a 8% dividend to me the dividend means the share price cannot go below 150 simply because why would a shareholder sell off at 150 when he is getting 8% dividend yield alone and then you look at the eps is 25 rupees you also look at the pe 6 rupees <coughs> you say okay P E can go up, E P S can go up. Yes, dividend yield will come down, but therefore the price can go up on one fifty to one seventy, maybe from one seventy to one seventy five. Maybe it is not sensational. Maybe it is not going to three hundred in a hurry, but it could go to three hundred in five years time. So if it give you eight percent dividend return uh, and you get a five percent appreciation return, it means you are getting thirteen fourteen percent return. And pro, I'm, right now I am not talking about taxation, which is a fantastic return. Right, so uh, it's a strange world. We live in an age of mental accounting. We know we can sell the share and realize the money, which is actually more efficient because you will pay lesser tax. But we still love dividends. So dividend-paying companies are treated better by the market. So they get a higher PE because people say, "Oh, it's very predictable. It's not dividend to come. I'll get one lakh rupees dividend from this share. So I don't want to touch that. Uh, the principal I will not touch." So when this one lakh becomes one lakh five, <coughs> they're okay, but they will not sell the original. So right, so it's a big conflict between what the company wants, what you want, what your mind mind wants, and how you rationalize all that. So all this go into making of a dividend policy. A company has to be careful while making a dividend policy because not everybody wants uh, not everybody wants dividend, not everybody wants growth. What you want and what the company wants is a conflict. so it is a job of the company to sit down and find out talking to the employees talking to itself finding out what growth prospect is as based on all that carve out a dividend policy yes modiglani miller <coughs> theory is important but behavioral finance is today uh, as relevant as modiglani and miller thank you